The next victim to be placed on the guillotine of cancel culture has been announced, and it is none other than Napoleon Bonaparte. This year marks the 200th anniversary of Napoleon's passing, the little Corsican general who destroyed the status quo of Europe and built upon it a new one. The general who was able to bring order into chaos of the Jac- following the Jacobin Revolution. The master statesman who was able to successfully bring a divided nation behind him in the name of civic nationalism. He who emancipated the French Jews and the Polish nation. However, according to Marlene Duat of the New York Times, or as I call it, the New York Lies, Napoleon is nothing more than an icon of white supremacy. According to the author, all of Napoleon's emancipation efforts and his efforts to liberalize European laws and institutions should be ignored or be discarded because of the fact that he reestablished slavery on the colony of Haiti, then called saint Domaine. If you read the entire article, you will note how she leaves out how the Haitian rebel population slaughtered virtually all whites on the island, regardless of them being slaveholders or not, where three to five thousand people were killed. Nor does she acknowledge the fact that the revolutionary Haitian government created a state where all other racial groups besides them were forbidden from living there. Not very woke, my friend. The authors go on to condemn France's so-called Year of Napoleon to commemorate his life. They seem to have no idea about the fact that Napoleon was far less racist from the common Frenchman or European living in the early 19th century. He personally felt that, I personally believe, that Emmanuel Macron, meanwhile, has been making rounds as the late condemning of wokeness, wokeness and the killing of America's idols should be taken seriously by us Americans. Who'd ever thought that all American males, such as myself, would look to the French for inspiration on how to properly separate a country and its heroes? Unlike in America, where civic participation has been replaced by the slave morality ethic, the French and others have decided to go in another direction. Maybe this is the type of lesson lesson the United States should be hearing, heeding from our European partners. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.